with the many souls like games out there in the wild and many stick with the same form that makes dark souls so great one game took a different direction and meshed three games together to make an endless looting grind fast pace over top combat with the difficulty that souls brings enter neo 2 a blend of diablo 2 looting ninja guide and fluid combat and the raging that you would expect from the souls like genre neo 2 is one of if not the best souls like gaming experience you will ever have from the deep complexity of builds to the fun story set in the sengoku era of japan set in the early 1500s you are playing a half yokai named hitty who befriends many different characters along the way during the upheaval in warlordism in japan neo 2 takes real dates of the sengoku era and characters based on the real life historical figures like excuse me if i butcher these names completely uh kinoshitia uh tokaruchu who later becomes totimi hideyoshi again i'm very sorry if i butchered this the mixing of fiction and non-fiction is very neat to see and going through the civil war era japan and incorporating with japan's folklore of the yokai or the demons it's very fun and interesting spin-off of a real life era guys before we jump into the review i'd appreciate if you took time to slap that like button push that subscribe button and leave me a comment below with your favorite uh, neo 2 weapons your favorite and your favorite boss fight i would love to know what you're using in your build and who was your favorite boss fight going against uh in all either the dlc uh or or the base game with nearing 300 hours and a little over a month, uh, I did break this review up in many areas as this game is very complex. It's in depth and detailed and to talk about and just randomness doesn't really help. So let's start while, while we all play Neo. The combat to note i am making this review without playing the dlc i am on new game plus but i will put out another video reviewing the dlc at a later date. So the combat if you have played any team ninja game ninja Gaiden neo one they also help develop hyrule warriors then you know you are already in for a treat when it comes to combat like most dark souls the combat unforgiving for those who don't make the time to learn the mechanics of the game but very rewarding for those who put time to learn mechanics are patient learn the combos the ins and outs of how the game functions during its combat sections and that's about 90 percent of the game if you played Ninja Guided, then you already know about the combos, the jutsu, the magic, the overtop slicing and dicing of your enemies. The combat is probably the best feature in you and makes some of the other soul games look like a snore fest. To say that combat is slow is like saying an airplane doesn't break the sound barrier. It's extremely fast combat. The combats are brutal and coupling with magic or new jutsu, it can get pretty insane. And once you get to new game plus collecting divine gear and really start getting deep into your build, it will get even faster. If done right, you can drop big boys in only a few hits. The combat is a huge step up from the normal souls play. And it's tons of fun if you are into fast pace over the top in your face and melting bodies combo. I'll try and go for some other descriptions. I just couldn't think of anything else. Um, so with the combo well, with the combat you also get a multitude of weapons you can choose from with their own animations combos look feel and playstyle. so for the melee weapons you get the sword the dual swords the spear the split axe the action hammer the, the kusigurama the odachi the tanfa the hatchet which are my personal favorite the switch glaive and your fists so you have many different ways to punching kicking slicing and dicing all your enemies in different ways i mean slice and dice it even make julian fries uh, then you have your ranged uh, and with the right build yes you can play fully ranged i've seen i've seen bow builds i've seen some crazy hand cannon builds so if you can will it if you will it you can build it so you have the bow the rifle and the hand cannon combat is absolutely very interesting and taking all the together the combos the different weapon skills the range your magic and ninjutsu and tying them together combat is an easy nine and a half out of ten uh in neo 2 there is just it's so good uh compared to all the other soul games i think anyone who loves fast-paced combat is going to love the combat let's move into the story so neo 2 is a prequel to neo 1 and no you don't need to play neo 1 to play neo 2 it all kind of ties together and fills you in one way or another while i play paid somewhat of attention to the story it's actually decent as you are half human half yokai also known as a shiftling and as you go through and befriend you know, it, uh, this me butchering his name again i'm very sorry uh Tokichiru, who wants to make his mark in the world by selling spirit stones or also known amrita which is you're using your resource to level up we'll get into that 
out later. You meet uh, you meet many other interesting characters along the way while fighting back the yokai and the evil warlords to gain control of the different regions. The story actually has some really good twists and leaves you with your jaw dropped as you don't expect certain things to happen. For a Souls-like RPG with a story, it's actually pretty decent and I left it as a 7 out of 10 and worth learning about and delving into more of the lore and, and the Japanese era uh, and the folklore around the yokai. It does make it kind of more fun as you go around slicing yokai in half knowing what the story is behind them. Uh, so the story is great. Pay attention. I think it's a lot more fun. I'm going through it again and I'm paying more attention to it and I'm enjoying it even more than the first time. I think the story is an easy 7 out of 10. Uh, so let's talk about the overworld map. This I'm not really a fan of this. So unlike Dark Souls, where the game is open, you can traverse the world in any direction. I do prefer this. Neo 2 kind of does this weird lobby style. The lobby is a over map and you move from mission to mission area from the overworld map. Uh, while it's cool and there are hidden items you can find on the map, I do prefer the free roaming the world and exploring. I feel like it just makes it connect more. The mission concept is cool and keeps the game moving, but at times it can feel disconnected. An example of this that does this a similar type of thing is like Warframe. Your lobby is your ship, the mission area are the plants you select, and then you fly to. But Team Ninja missions are a blast, and moving from mission to is painless and easy and really keeps the game flowing. Some of the missions are great for farming items, while others are great for f uh, farming Amrita, while others are great for finding hidden, uh, hidden smithing text or just running missions to unlock other submissions. Uh, so there are many missions that you have to do to unlock uh, many different either features of the game or other missions of the game and they all kind of tied together they all are tied to this story for that region uh, and then tied to the longer story uh, back up at the top uh, of the whole story so overall the missions are great and a lot of fun to do I just wish it was more of a open world type like uh, Dark Souls you don't don't expect to really be speed running this game because it's kind of you can't I mean you, you, I guess you can do flawless runs of missions but you can't really speed run the game itself like Dark Souls people do or Dark Souls content creators do so let's move on to leveling up this is where Neo and other soul games differ and I kind of like it in the Neo series you get your Amrita which is your souls and gold and you use your gold to buy items craft respecting etc where Amrita is only for leveling your characters up like Souls games though, if you die, you have one chance to get your Amrita, and if you die along the way, you lose it for good. They do make it so you can find some of their candles uh, to summon your Guardian Spirit back to you and get all your Amrita back. Uh, those are very rare items, the, the Summoner Candles, so if you have them, make sure you use them wisely. Uh, like most Soul games, each stat ties to armor and weapons as well as your magic and ninjutsu. Scaling leveling is a whole separate video, but I really like the way Team Ninja took the approach to separating gold and experience to ensure you can have one resource for leveling up and another resource for your crafting, your buying, and your items components. Uh, I think they did a really good job with this area, and it really does separate the difference between all the other Soul games uh, and clones that are out there. Let's jump into crafting. After you beat the Beast Born of Smoke and Flames, I think this is in the second region, possibly the third. Uh, I think it's the second region. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Uh, you then unlock the blacksmith. From here, you can then buy, sell, forge your equipment. Uh, eventually, you'll be able to soul forge your equipment, uh, which will actually go ahead and make your uh, equipment stronger. In the beginning of the game, I wouldn't even bother soul forging equipment. I would just equip everything that's better for you. Uh, whatever new armor you have, whatever new weapon you have, I would just keep equipping the better uh, equipment you have just to get through the game, the first new game build and soul forging doesn't matter through new game plus uh, you can use soul forging to overwrite inheritance or add new ones as you get later in the game uh, you can also do tempering which will change uh, or, or move special effects from gear and arm to complete your build as well as rem uh, and then you can also remodel which lets you change your equipment to scale off either famili familiarity your main weapon stat so like if you're using a sword your sword scales off of heart uh, but if you're dumping into dexterity for a ninjutsu build uh, you'll be able to scale your sword off of um, dex, which is pretty cool and allows you then to have a nice sword dex build. Uh, the hatching, the, the crafting system is unique and fun and will allow you to spend a lot of your time here praying to Aaron Jesus as you roll for certain tempers or forging new weapons, etc. Uh, also, as you use the blacksmith services, you will get patronage points, which will allow, which can be reduced, used to reduce costs, increase your fines, and use patronage points to soul forge instead of gold and among other things. Careful with soul forging as you get further in the game because it can 
can get ridiculously expensive. Uh, and, and you'll need to use this to upgrade your divine gear from plus one, plus two, plus three, all the way up to plus ten. And you will go broke extremely fast. So really make sure you are going uh careful soul forging and only soul forging when you really need to when you when you have the ability to do what you need to do. Um, to craft new weapons and armor, uh, you will also be farming for smithing tax. We talked about these briefly. The smithing tax actually allow you to craft either weapons, full sets of armor, um, oh, and that, well, that's really it. <laughs> these will come from either mystery rewards, boss drops. Um, there will be some hidden ones you can find. You get them from dojo missions. Uh, so they're all over the world. Uh, so just make sure you pay attention to what you're looking for. You know, check out factorylife.com. They have a bunch of areas where you can go and uh, find it and uh, find what, what smithing tax. You want there are tons of resources that i will leave down below uh for smithing text and things like that uh, that you can find so let's talking about crafting let's jump into the builds so i i know i keep throwing around the word builds around so let's you know jump into these builds are the bread and butter of neo 2 and well usually the bread and butter of any rpg that has stats really think about it uh, it's it's you know any game any game that has loot uh, loot stats and endless grind to obtain the but to be real, builds are everything, almost anything is workable. I'll be putting out my own build video as soon as I'm working on this hatch build I am in love with. But also with build videos, uh, everyone in a game like this are really subjective. And there are so many ways to make a sword or hatch build or fist build that one way is not better than the other. So don't let a video that says, Oh my god, the best one million damage sword build ever! sway into playing that way as some builds are cheesy and while it's cool to fart thanks tasso uh, and kill a boss you lose a whole lot of what makes neo 2 great that's the combat and fun maybe but maybe farting on a boss and killing them is is your thing i mean who, who am i to tell you how to play all i'm saying is look for different ways to play and neo 2 when it comes to build is all about experimenting there are so many resources like i mentioned before that i'll leave down be below in the description to start your own build and play and see what you like instead of finding Oh my god, the best one million damage sword builds ever! Enjoy the game and experiment builds can be the best part of the game if you take time to understand the complex systems and look for the synergy between the different stats, weapons, armors, and items. You may find yourself building an ice fire build where you saturate the enemy and load up fire damage and fire dots to burn their health away. Either way, just experiment. The game gives you so many ways to respect. These are called Book of Reincarnations from the Blacksmith or the Tea House, which I did not cover here. We'll cover that in a different video. Missions and drops. Do note that buying the, Bla the Book of Reincarnation from the Tea House or the Blacksmith does make the price go up a lot. But but you can get them from missions, so don't fret. Again, all I can say is play with all the weapons you first play through. Keep a balanced stat sheet as you go to wear different armor, to play with the different weapons, use magic and ninjutsu to see what matches you and not. Oh my god, one million damage sword build. In my opinion, in the conclusion, Neo 2 is the best Souls-like game, even surpassing Neo 1. Team Ninja came in, swung, and hit a Gram Slam. That's not to say the game doesn't have its issue, because, well, it does. Uh, farming Revenants from builds, RNG is a nightmare. Oh, gosh, it's just a myriad of just RNG issues, and the, the inheriting uh, system is just kind of a annoyance, too. But from the ground up, Neo 2 is something that other clones can't catch up with. And while they are a great game, Games, having played many of them from Dark Souls to Code Vein, Dark Souls Light, uh, it's it, Neo 2 is in a league of its own. So if you need to stay satisfy Ninja Gaiden combat while waiting of the remaster of Ninja Gaiden, Neo is your game. Or maybe you need an endless loot grind. Or maybe you need a new game to make you rage and snap some controls and maybe punch a monitor or two. Don't do that. Your bank account won't like you. Then Neo 2 is for you. Go check it out. Won't, you won't be disappointed. It's really the best Souls like game out there, and the builds are so much fun. If you grab it or have it on PC, yo, add me on Steam. I'm Riven Bow Dragon, and I will gladly run missions with you, help you out, and answer as many questions as I can. Make sure to comment down below with your thoughts on Neo 2 and your favorite weapons and boss site. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. Guys, I appreciate you all so much for hanging out and watching this, and I will catch you all next time. Peace out, Bow Dragons.